एवरीवन दिस इज ख्याति माहेश्वरी दिस साइड एंड आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डिले लेट्स डायरेक्टली बिगिन विद आर टॉपिक टेटोलॉजी ऑफ फिलो इट इज अ कंजनाइटल हार्ट डिजीज सो बिफोर डिस्कसिंग दैट लेट्स फर्स्ट सी वॉट इज क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ कंजनाइटल हार्ट डिजीज इज कंजनाइटल मीन्स अ डिजीज विच इज प्रेजेंट सिंस बर्थ सो क्लासिफिकेशन इंक्लूड्स थ्री पार्ट्स ग्रॉस एनॉमलीज लीजन्स विदाउट शंट एंड लीजन्स विद शंट Gross anomalies are the diseases which have no relation to the shunt. So the first one is ectopia cordis. Ectopia cordis is a disease in which heart tends to come out of the skin. It is just it is present just below the skin, or we can say it is not it is not covered with sternum or the breast bone. Here we can see this is ectopia cordis. The second one is cardiac malpositions or cardiac improper positioning. when the heart is not present at its correct position it can be dextrocardia or mesocardia dextrocardia is when heart's apex is situated towards the right side rather than left side mesocardia when the heart's apex is not present and it is heart is present at center of the chest cavity third is congenital complete heart block and then comes lesion without shunts shunt now what is shunt shunt is basically a passage or we can say a common channel which connects two blood vessels which is basically responsible for mixing of blood between two blood vessels okay so we are discussing lesions without shunt that includes stenosis of the blood vessels or we can say narrowing of the blood vessels and lesion with shunts include defects or we can say the hole fine so the first is left heart malformation left heart malformation includes stenosis of the blood vessels or the valves which are present at left side so the first is pulmonary vein stenosis second mitral stenosis mitral regurgitation due to mitral stenosis aortic stenosis aortic valve regurgitation and coarctation of aorta coarctation of aorta is also aortic stenosis but the difference is in aortic stenosis narrowing of the aorta is present near the aortic valve whereas in coarctation of aorta narrowing is present close to ductus arteriosus we can see it in this picture this is aortic stenosis near the aortic valve and here coarctation here the narrowing is present near the ductus arteriosus then next comes right heart malform malformation that includes the narrowing of the things which are present at right, right side first is asynoptic epstein's anomaly this uh, in epstein's anomaly basically the tricuspid valves are abnormal or there is some malformation in tricuspid valve we can see this in this picture here the tricuspid leaflet are shaped abnormally so the right ventricle got enlarged and there can be many more consequences in this epstein's anomaly so the second is pulmonic stenosis stenosis of pulmonary artery congenital pulmonary valve regurgitation pulmonary artery branch stenosis stenosis of the things or abnormality of a malformation of the things which are present at right side then comes lesion with shunts shunts now if there is some defect present in heart or some uh, septum then mixing of blood would occur between the two side of the heart now two side could be left to right or right to left depending on the direction of blood flow okay so lesion with shunt includes defect and defect uh, blood flow through defect can be in any direction if it is present left to right that means blood from left side of the heart that is oxygenated blood is mixing to the right side and it is circulating in pulmonary circulation so it is not impurifying the blood which is circulating in the body so it is asynoptic but if the circulation is or direction of the shunt is right to left then impure blood is mixing in pure blood or we can say unoxygenated blood is mixing in oxygenated blood and circulating in body in systemic circulation so it would produce cyanotic conditions since unoxygenated blood is circulating in body okay so now left to right shunt includes 
आर्टीरियल सेप्टल डिफेक्ट वेंट्रिकुलर सेप्टल डिफेक्ट और दे कैन बी देर कैन बी मल्टीपल मल्टीपल लेवल शंट्स दैट इंक्लूड ए एस डी प्लस वी एस डी दैन द थर्ड इज पेटन डक्टस आर्टरीओसिस एंड द लास्ट इज अलकापा दैट इज अ नॉमलस ओरिजिन ऑफ लेफ्ट कोरोनरी आर्टरी फ्रॉम पलमनरी आर्टरी दैन द देन देर इज दिस राइट टू लेफ्ट शंट इट इंक्लूड्स टेटोलॉजी ऑफ अ लॉ एबस्टीन्स एनॉमली इफ इट इज सैनोटिक एंड इट इफ एंड इफ इट इज ए सैनोटिक इट वुड बी इंक्लूडेड इन लीजन विदाउट शंट ओके द थर्ड इज डबल आउटलेट राइट वेंट्रिकल फोर्थ इज ट्रंकस आर्टरियोसिस एंड फिफ्थ इज पलमोनरी आर्टरियो वीनस फिस्टूला वी वुड नॉट गो डीप इन टू दीज बट आई वुड सजेस्ट यू इफ यू आर लर्निंग अबाउट दीज कंजनाइटल हार्ट डिजीजेस अदर देन टेटोलॉजी ऑफ अ लॉ so you should first read about fetal circulation then you should see these things okay now let's start with tetralogy of filo it is most common cyanotic congenital heart disease in the patients who survive infancy okay who stays up to infant stage infancy they uh, there this congenital heart disease is present and it is the most common okay so it is composed of four anatomic abnormalities first is vsd that is large non restrictive ventricular septal defect second is pulmonary stenosis third is overriding of aorta and fourth is right ventricular hypertrophy okay now we don't need to cram these things we learn them systematically in in a particular order so you don't need to cram these things and also let me give you a very happy disclaimer about this disease this is one of my very favorite disease it is very interesting and it is very easy to memorize okay now before reading these details let us first visualize how tetralogy of filo looks like okay so the first and foremost thing to remember about this disease is ventricular septal defect there is a defect between septum which divides right and left ventricle okay so this is the septum and we can see this is the defect which is present between ventricular septum okay now the upper part of this septum this is upper part and this is lower part of the septum upper part of the septum which we say infundibular septum is shifted towards the right side and anterior side so it is basically compressing the pulmonary artery and creating a space for aorta to shift to right side so aorta is basically overriding overriding the space of pulmonary artery why because the infundibular septum the upper part of the septum upper part of the defect uh, upper part of the septum which lies above the defect is shifting to right an anterior side so it is basically compressing the pulmonary artery and creating a space for aorta to 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 take over the space of pulmonary artery okay so the first thing is ventricular septal defect and the consequences which it is causing okay now as we know there is a defect in septum so the mixing of blood would take place between the ventricles now the question here arises in which direction would the mixing of blood would take place so as we all know the blood pressure of left ventricle is higher than right ventricle because left ventricle needs to supply the blood to entire body and uh, systemic circulation so the muscle mass in left ventricle is more as compared to right ventricle so the pressure in left ventricle is more so in initial stages blood flow would take in this direction from left ventricle to right ventricle till this time when the circulation is in this direction there is no much problem why because the oxygenated blood of the left ventricle is entering the right ventricle where unoxygenated blood is present and it would go to pulmonary artery and it would go to lungs to get purified again so it is basically a time waste for a oxygenated blood which is getting purified again but yes 
there is no cyanotic condition there is no impure blood which is circulating in the body so there is no big problem till then but what happens is gradually the size of defect starts increasing and hypertrophy of right ventricle take place how as the blood is coming more and more and more blood starts coming to right ventricle a stage would come when the pressure of right ventricle would be equal to left ventricle why because as we all know right ventricle is not made to handle such high amount of blood so its walls are comparatively thin as compared to left ventricle but when this abundant amount of blood come into right ventricle the muscle mass tends to replicate muscle mass tends to grow the right ventricular musculature goes into hypertrophy to be able to circulate this large abundant amount of blood which right ventricle is getting from left ventricle okay so it is basically a phenomena which heart is adapting to pump the blood from right ventricle so slowly and gradually the musculature of right ventricle increases and increases and increases and a time would come when the musculature of right ventricle would be higher than left ventricle okay that time the pressure of right ventricle would be greater than left ventricle and that point of time is problematic for our heart so you understand now what is happening more and more blood is coming to right ventricle so right ventricle tries to adapt it tries to push the abundant blood so it tries it by hypertrophying the musculature of right ventricle okay now as we can see right ventricle musculature is so thick as compared to left ventricle it it used to be this thin the dotted line the dotted line shows the original right ventricle whereas the hype whereas in this picture i have shown the hypertrophied right ventricle okay so now when right ventricle pressure is higher than left ventricle because the muscle mass is very high now so blood flow would take place in this direction from right ventricle to left ventricle now the unoxygenated blood is going to left ventricle and it is mixing the oxygenated blood then from left ventricle it would go to aorta so aorta is basically getting mixed blood at this stage when the defect has increased in size and the musculature of right ventricle is in very hypertrophied condition so the right ventricle blood is mixing with left ventricle and the mix oxygenated and deoxygenated blood is going to aorta okay the main reason for cyanotic blood which is circulating in aorta is overriding of aorta not this reason why because we can see in this picture this is aorta this is pulmonary artery pulmonary artery is shifted to this side because of infundibular septum and this aorta is taking place of pulmonary artery it has also it has also shifted to right side so now what is happening is the blood from right ventricle is directly entering to the aorta it is directly entering to the aorta and this is the main reason why impure blood or deoxygenated blood is circulating in systemic circulation or to the entire body now from here onwards cyanotic condition dyspnea would occur because the blood is hypoxic hypoxic blood is circulating in entire body okay so these are the things which we see and the last thing which we are seeing is pulmonary artery stenosis the lumen of pulmonary artery it is decreasing okay so there are three reasons for pulmonary artery stenosis the first reason is infundibular infundibular septum shifting i have told you in beginning only infundibulum 
septum this upper part of the septum is shifting to the right side so it is basically compressing the pulmonary artery which is reducing its lumen okay the first thing is this second reason is overriding of iota the iota this we can see iota is taking place of pulmonary artery so it is also putting pressure on pulmonary artery so it is basically compressing it and making the lumen size go down okay the third most important reason for pulmonary stenosis is hypertrophy of pulmonary artery wall why as we know right ventricle is not made to handle such high amount of blood same goes with pulmonary artery also uh, we know lumen of iota and musculature of iota is very big is very strong and is very high because iota gets abundant amount of blood and it has to supply to entire body but pulmonary artery has to take blood only in pulmonary circulation only to the lung so it's not is its musculature is not that strong and its lumen is also not that big enough but now when the blood is coming from left ventricle to the right ventricle hypertrophy take place in right ventricle same ways hypertrophy also take place in pulmonary artery because pulmonary artery is getting such a high amount of blood and it is not made to take this high amount of blood so its walls also starts replicating and muscle mass goes high so its lumen size basically reduces this is the lumen of pulmonary artery we see here okay so this completes the story of tetralogy of fellow we just re re read about four things the first and foremost thing was ventricular septal defect there was a defect between septum which is causing mixing of the blood in right and left side of the heart in initial stages blood goes from left ventricle to right ventricle but later on as the gap size or the defect size increases and later on as the musculature of right ventricle increases right ventricle goes into hypertrophy the direction of blood flow gets changed it takes place from right ventricle to left ventricle and then it goes to iota iota gets mixed blood iota gets impure blood which is circulating in the body so cyanotic conditions are developing and as we uh, we have also read about overriding of iota and pulmonary stenosis which is taking place due to shifting of infundibular septum and other hypertrophy effects in pulmonary artery so this is the story now we have to uh, take this in mind and now we will read the things about it so the first is ventricular septal defect tof occurs as a result of anterocephalic mal alignment of infundibular septum resulting in ventricular septal defect this means the infundibular septum the upper part of the septum is shifting anteriorly that is mal alignment is taking place it is shifting right side and anteriorly so there is a defect which can be seen in the ventricular septum okay now defect in defect in septum of the ventricles can be mild moderate or severe blood pressure as we know is higher in left ventricle as compared to right ventricle so the thick musculature uh, why because left ventricle has a thick musculature to pump the blood in whole body it takes part in systemic circulation whereas right ventricle has very less pressure because it need to pump only in pulmonary circulation it need to pump only to the lungs there is no high pressure required in right ventricle in initial stages we see this thing okay so the blood flow is taking place from left ventricle to right ventricle from high pressure to low pressure in initial stages so the pure blood is mixing in impure blood oxygenating again so it is not a big deal but left uh, now left ventricle blood is maximum going to iota but some also going to right ventricle remember this thing left ventricle blood is going to iota but yes obviously there is high pressure in left ventricle 
so left ventricle blood is also going to right ventricle if this condition continues left to right shunt continues for long time or defect size increases then a time would come when pressure in right and left ventricle would be equal and then if this condition continues for more longer period of time then a time would come when pressure in right ventricle would be higher than left ventricle okay so this diagram is basically to show the infundibular septum so this is showing the defect which is here in infundibular part uh, this is showing defect can be different different it can be perimembranous it can be subarterial infundibular it can be muscular or it can be arterioventicular canal okay now uh, now the problem will arise when the blood would flow from left ventricle to no from right ventricle to left ventricle an oxygenated blood would go to oxygenated side impure blood will circulate in aorta so cyanosis hypoxia and dyspnea like conditions would develop second is right ventricular hypertrophy it occurs to accommodate high pressure to be able to pump more blood as more blood is coming in it from left ventricle this is a reason how pressure in right ventricle gets higher than left ventricle so now due to right ventricular hypertrophy the direction of shunt changes from right to left okay the third is pulmonary stenosis that is narrowing of the pulmonary artery it is subvalvular it takes place it takes place at subvalvular site blood flows from left ventricle to right ventricle initially and then to pulmonary arteries leading to pulmonary plethora that means excess amount of blood is going from left ventricle to pulmonary artery and pulmonary plethora is taking place plethora means excess abundant amount of blood okay the muscle mass in pulmonary artery is increasing to push this abundant amount of blood this decreases the lumen of pulmonary opening lumen size also decreases as aorta steals space from pulmonary artery due to overriding of aorta due to infundibular septum okay now blood gush into pulmonary artery producing ejection systolic murmur now the blood is going from see here blood is going from right ventricle to pulmonary artery now here we can see the space is very little for this abundant amount of blood to go into pulmonary artery so it goes with a very high velocity with a very high pressure with this narrow space if something is going with a very high pressure through a narrow opening so obviously it would produce a thrill like sound so it is producing murmur and we are naming it ejection systolic murmur because it is take taking place at systole and blood is ejecting out from right ventricle to pulmonary artery okay then the fourth is overriding of aorta aorta becomes too large shifting of aorta to the right side at level of ventricular septal defect to collect abundant blood present in right ventricle blood is going directly from right ventricle to aorta and this is the main reason for impure blood circulating in the body eventually as this continues as this condition worsens eventual exhaustion of heart will take place a time would come when heart would not be able to meet the demands of body okay so this completes the story of tetralogy of the law now we will read about the clinical feature clinical presentation how the child of tof condition would look like okay so the first and foremost is cyanosis as we all know after this long story this is basic cyanosis is happening due to mixing of blood cyanosis may not be present at birth but later on develops after one year of age initial stages uh, body does not require high amount of oxygen but as the year goes on as the age progresses body's requirement of oxygen goes high and cyanotic condition develops more and more okay now we we'll remember these clinical features in a particular system like 
the first is cyanosis now we learn what cyanosis is causing to the body it is causing hypersynotic episodes which are called as tetralogy spells tet spells or felot spells hypersynotic episode means a condition is coming when the oxygen demand is going very high and hypersynosis in body is taking place now when would this occur this would take place when the baby is crying or exerting like after any exertion or during feeding because at this time oxygen demand in body would increase and the body would not be able to meet those requirements so the cyanosis condition would worsen it would lead to hypersynosis and it can be visually seen in the form of tet spells or felot spells we give, we have given this name after the disease only and spells basically denotes what is the sign or what is the significant feature of tof disease so we are calling this thing as felot spells okay so in this baby suddenly develops deep blue skin nails or lips if the lips are bluely colored that denotes central cyanosis if the skin or nails are blue colored it denotes peripheral cyanosis but if the cyanotic condition worsens more it it affects the central system so it uh, it is called a central cyanosis it takes place after crying exertion feeding when the shunt becomes prominent shunt becomes prominent means the circulation is not properly done unoxygenated blood is circulating in the body as we know the shunt direction is from right to left now no from left to right to left yes so it is basically adversifying so shunt becomes prominent child may be apneic and may fall unconsciousness if proper interventions are not given at per proper time then child may become apneic apnea is a condition where there is no oxygen present in blood and it may lead to unconsciousness also okay so the first clinical feature was cyanosis and then the second we remember after cyanosis is hypersynotic episodes now the third thing which cyanosis is causing is dyspnea on exertion dyspnea is shortness of breath uh, shortness of breath i'm so sorry uh, when the baby is exerting more and more so the demand of oxygen would increase so breathlessness would be felt okay so the next thing which we can remember after cyanosis from cyanosis is retarded growth and development why because proper oxygen is not going to the brain proper oxygen is not going to the different organs so the growth would be retarded then the next thing which we can remember after cyanosis is polycythemia polycythemia means multiplication of rbcs increase in number of rbcs this would take place because the blood is hypoxic cyanotic conditions are present in blood rbcs would multiply so as to meet the requirement in body okay so we have we first know the cyanosis is taking place then we remember all of the symptoms after cyanosis that were hypersynotic episodes dyspnea retarded growth and development and the last one was polycythemia okay now the next symptoms which we we'll learn is clubbing of the fingers and heart murmurs heart murmur i have already told you ejection systolic murmur, murmur which we can see which we can actually hear then the next symptom is clubbing of fingers why clubbing of fingers is taking place because when there is hypoxic condition oxygen is going less to the peripheries for long duration of time okay when peripheries are not getting extreme most part of the peripheries that is the nail part or the toes or fingertips when they are not getting proper oxygen to so then their nail bed goes into hypertrophy so this is called clubbing of fingers okay then next comes heart murmurs and low birth weight and poor feeding 
child is not able to feed properly because as he feeds oxygen demand would go uh, high why because respiration needs oxygen and if oxygenation oxygen demand would go high so baby would try to prevent feeding uh, he won't like to feed so poor feeding would give rise to low birth weight okay so these are the all clinical fe features which we have to remember the first was first one was cyanosis then tetralogy spells hypersynaptic episodes which we say then from cyanosis we learned about dyspnea retarded growth and development polycythemia then we learned about two clinical features clubbing of fingers and heart murmurs then two were correlated poor feeding and low birth weight okay now some children peculiarly peculiarly get relief by squatting after exercise why uh, mothers are basically told to uh, perform squatting to the baby or do knee to chest exercise to the baby because when squatting is done or knee to chest is done the blood vessels of the lower limb are pressing and there is a resistance in lower limb blood vessels so if the resistance is increasing the venous return to the heart would increase venous return to right atrium would increase this would help in uh, comforting the cyanotic situations so mother is told to do squatting or knee to chest activity if hypersynaptic conditions develop most patients die after yaf during infancy or childhood adults usually do not suffer from cyanotic spells but fatigue dyspnea on exertion and secondary polycythemia may occur which may lead to thrombotic strokes which are common okay uh, if it is a case of acquired tof then adults may be having these symptoms that is fatigueness dyspnea polycythemia but they do not have cyanotic spells okay so this completes the topic regarding pathology so we'll read it till here only till clinical features but if you want to read about the read from medicine perspective you can refer to my next video which would be including management part and diagnosis part but for pathology point of view this is enough i hope you would have understood it well and thank you so much for watching my video if you want the pictures of my notes you can refer to my instagram page by the name caducious underscore khyati and if you want the pdf of my notes you can refer to my telegram page by the name caducious Thank you.